Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the Guyana Crested Eagle. It's a really fascinating species. Before I jump in, if you haven't already, if you could hit subscribe, it really helps me keep this channel up and going. Uh, but let's go ahead, let's jump in and talk about this incredible species, the Guyana Crested Eagle. The Guyana Crested Eagle is a hard one. It's a unique species with very little information out there about it. It lives uh, throughout Central and South America and it's kind of widely distributed. It's not particularly common, uh, but it's listed as not threatened, so that's the good news. But that being said, there are not very many of them out there that we can tell. But they're so secretive that a lot of people say it's just that people do not see them. Now this species, it is an eagle, but it's very narrow. It's incredibly long-legged and incredibly narrow and slender. Uh, the wingspan is about five feet, nine inches, which isn't that big. But you gotta remember this is a forest bird and forest hunters usually have a very long tail and very narrow wings that allows them to dive in and out and, and be able to pull their wings in and not have problems with that. But that being said, it doesn't weigh very much. It only weighs 2.8 pounds to 6.6 .6 pounds, which 6.6 .6 is the upper end. That's kind of above average for this species. And that's getting into the size of like a male golden eagle, but it's still quite small for being still being an eagle. Now, the interesting thing about this, you may have noticed looking at the pictures, it looks very similar to a harpy eagle. And genetics have shown that it is very closely related to a harpy eagle. Uh, there is, they form part of a sister clade. So there's kind of three harpies. There's the true harpy eagle, which is enormous. It's the gigantic bird. And the, the largest one in captivity was 27 pounds. Enormous and by far the most powerful eagle on the planet. Then there's the Guyana crested eagle, which we're talking about, which is all in Central and South America. And then there's the Papuan eagle, which used to be called the New Guinea harpy eagle. And then was thought to be, no, it's not closely related to harpies. And then they did DNA tests and it turns out it is. So these three, uh, you know, uh, Papua and New Guinea is the other side of the world from true harp eagles and Guyana crested eagles. But um, they, they are very closely related. But the harpy is the enormous one. The Guyana crested is not all that big. It's still a very big, very incredibly powerful bird, but it's just not, uh, not nearly as big as a harp eagle. So this bird, uh, the very interesting thing about them is their color morphs. So first of all, they start off with their juvenile colors. Their juvenile colors are kind of pale white and very closely mimic the coloration of a harp eagle. Now we see this throughout the New World. There are, throughout the tropical New World, there are many species of raptors where their first year of life, they basically look like a harp eagle, a juvenile harp eagle. So in other words, a juvenile Guyana crested eagle looks almost identical to a juvenile harp eagle. Now it takes, you know, five, six years to have different molts, different molts, different molts until they get their adult colors. The assumption is that by mimicking the coloration of an adult, uh, I mean, sorry, the, the, the thought is like by looking like the juvenile of a much larger species, that it does two things. And number one, you might think, oh, that could be a guy on a crested eagle. Oh wait, it might be a harpy eagle, I'm gonna leave it alone. But it also, might uh, engender the wrath of a potential parent. So in other words, if you're a juvenile guy on a crested eagle and another predator sees you and thinks, oh, that's a juvenile harp eagle, there might be an adult harp eagle nearby that might defend and attack me, so I better not mess with that juvenile. That's the thought. There's very extreme examples of this. For example, uh, the ornate hawk eagle. It is a juvenile, very much does look like a harp eagle. And then as an adult, it's a totally different bird. It's all colorful and bright and entirely different. So we see this common in the Guyana crested eagle is no different. But what's really strange is the Guyana crested eagles have different color morphs as adults. This is very unusual. Most eagles and most tropical eagles, they'll just have 
a basic color morph. And within that, you might have one that's a little lighter and a little darker. But Guyana Crested Eagles have very distinct color morphs. They have a light color morph that even has a little bit of red on the chest. It's very pale and, and very red. And then there's a dark or melanistic morph. It's kind of cool to know that there are these two very distinct color morphs. Now, the Guyana Crested Eagle, um, I call it the Guyana Crested Eagle, and that's what most people call it, but online you're seeing a lot of people calling it the Crested Eagle, but there's a lot of birds that are called the Crested Eagle. For example, the African Crested Eagle, which I'll do a video on soon, uh, is a really cool species with an enormous crest. There's a lot of birds that have in their common name, uh, Crested is part of their name. So. Guyana Crested Eagle uh, is a little more specific, and that way we know what we're talking about. Uh, this species lives in elevation from about 3,000 feet above sea level to about 5,000 feet above sea level, and really it hunts everything. It really hunts the same things that harp eagles hunt. It hunts a wide range of birds and a wide range of mammals. Uh, it's more of a still hunter. It likes to just sit there and wait for something to come along and then chase after it but it has been known to pursue a wide range of birds and parrots, which is pretty cool. It's a very powerful eagle with a strong grip, but again, it, it kind of looks like a discount harp eagle. Harp eagles just beefy and big old legs and broad shoulders and broad leg stands. And the Guyana Crested Eagle, which is, you know, a, a type of harpy, is like really narrow and very long-legged. Harp eagles do have long legs, but Guyana Crested Eagles seem to have disproportionately long legs, as do the Papuan Eagles that I mentioned earlier as well, that are the other of the three harpies. So uh, really cool species and very hard to find pictures of and incredibly hard to find information on. Uh, the interesting thing about these, they, in the 1970s, uh, they were apparently fairly easy to acquire. There's a lot of wildlife trainers in the United States who had them. So if you uh, watch videos, so it used to be the laws were so loose or almost non-existent, and if you were a person with a, a rough permit, you could just get some really cool exotic animals. And all the, all the uh, kind of like wildlife documentaries we grew up with were usually trained animals that were used and they would just piece video clips together of these trained animals and then make it into a story. <laughs> I was watching um, a really funny show the other day. It wasn't meant to be funny. It was, I think it was called Cry Wilderness and it was kind of like this Bigfoot show. But in it, then there's this scene where the, there's like this, this Native American shaman in the forest and he's surrounded by all these animals. So there's raccoons and cougars and bears and wolves. But there's also a bald eagle which was actually an African fish eagle, which looks kind of similar to a bald eagle, but totally different. And there was a Guyana crested eagle as well, which is like, uh, that's from Central America and South America, not, not something you'd have in the Pacific Northwest. But I've talked to a lot of wildlife educators and apparently in the 1970s, a lot of people had access to these, trained with them, worked with them, found them to be fascinating, and really fun birds. Uh, but again, you don't have that case anymore. I don't know of any of them in the United States, uh, but really an incredible species and um, one that I just thought would be important to share. One very strange thing about the species that has been documented is there have been instances where a harpy eagle has had a nest and with harp eagles, when the babies start to get older, the parents might go out for a day or two and hunt and the baby's just alone in the nest. There's been instances where Guyana crested eagles have brought food to and fed the baby harpy eagles and even brought clumps of nest, like nesting material to add to the nest. This is very strange. Now, again, a baby harpy eagle looks very similar to a baby Guyana crested eagle. So maybe there's some sort of maternal instinct that just clicked in and it was like, oh, there's a baby that needs to be fed. Uh, I need to go feed it. Maybe something like that, we don't know. Uh, that has been very well documented, but not very well understood. So again, really kind of a fascinating species with a lot of secrets still yet to be revealed about this species. But I love the guy on a crested eagle and uh, it will be really cool to work with one. But again, 
A lot smaller than you would expect, but still a big, beautiful, powerful species of eagle. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about the species. Uh, let me know your comments uh, down below if you've worked with them or seen them in the wild. I would love to know more about the species. The more we can share about this online, the better. And uh, if you haven't already, if you could hit subscribe, I very much appreciate it. And as always, happy hawking. Mm -hmm.